here we are again hi guys if I don't say hi guys everybody complains so hello guys uh, I'm going to show you an example of a problem that when you are asked to solve it seems extremely easy and it's not that it's difficult but it becomes a mess when you try to solve it so we're gonna do moment of inertia of a triangular set shape with respect to the centroid let's see uh, how this goes because probably I'm gonna mess up when I'm doing it so let's check it out okay we have a triangle let's say that we have this triangle here and we want to calculate the moment of inertia with respect to the centroid we know where the centroid is located because we showed this before the centroid of the triangle and even if I didn't show it you know it the, if this is a triangle with base B and height H the centroid is going to be located one third from the right angle one third from here and two thirds from the acute angle so this is going to be two thirds of B and one third of B and similarly this is going to be from here to here one third of H and two thirds of H the principle is extremely easy because it becomes exactly like we were discussing before moment of inertia if I say this is my x y centroidal axis I'm not gonna put the knob here the zero because I, I just don't want to start writing zero 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 everywhere so x y we know that is centroidal because it's located at the centroid if I say I sub x here I know it's the integral of y squared dA and I'm gonna do it with respect to x but you cannot move it and you can do it with respect to any other axis that you want to y squared dA we're going to measure y and this is going to be my dA remember that dA could be there or could be here depending on if it's my y in that direction that that uh, differential of area could be here or could be here measure y and that's the dA the dA is this little band here with a thickness of dy that's what we have our problem is basically finding that little band because that little band uh, is going to be my dA as I say and that dA is going to be this width or this width which is variable multiplied by dy I'm going to call that width like small a a times dy now a, what most people mess up when they try to solve this problem is that they still try to keep the reference axis here while the reference axis should be there if you do that then you you have to find the equation of this straight line in order to find that little square there that, that little uh, band over there that little band that I call a the width of that band I'm gonna just make this uh, bigger here so you can probably see it better it is my centroid my centroid here what I'm looking for is a band that goes from here to here for saying something I'm selecting the smaller part because it's easier to see here what I'm gonna explain to you so the distance that I'm looking for is the distance from here to here now how do I find that distance? Well, I need the equation of the line, this line, and the equation of the line, I have realized that most of the students, or a lot of the students, and why not to say, a bunch of professionals, they, they have troubles finding that equation of the line. Because they always say, oh, okay, mx plus b, y equal mx plus b, what b is the y, y equal mx plus b, where this is not the base, this is the y intercept, and m is a slope, but the y intercept is zero because it starts from here. No, 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 that's not b, the y intercept is this one. That is a y intercept, and I have to know which one is that y intercept, how, how what is the intersection between that and, and the, and the line and the reason I have to find this is because that little distance a I know the total distance from here to here is one third of b because it's the location of the center this is one third of b and I also know that the distance from this axis to any point any point including this is x 
when that x is defined by this equation. So if I want to find that a, that a, this a, is no other thing that one third of b minus x. And this x is defined by that equation. Now, the slope is rise over run. Remember that, rise is h, run is b. It doesn't matter if I consider two points here and here, I can do it in that way. But at the end, the run is gonna be h divided by b. So y is gonna be equal to h divided by b multiplied by x, this is the slope, plus the y-intercept. Now, the y-intercept, the point where this intersects here, the line and the x-axis, the y-intercept is no other thing than this height from here to here. Now, that height is one-third of h. And you can prove it, and you can solve it. This is one third of h, this is another third of h, and this is the other third of h. I know this, the drawing is not a scale, but I wasn't trying to do a drawing. I, I'm just trying to explain you what is happening. So the y-intercept here is one third of h. Now, for these, I need x, and that's what I have to do, solve for x. So if I solve for x, I pass this to the other side, and then I have that h over b x is equal to y minus one third of h and then i multiply oh that's my phone fully charged good so now i pass this to the other side so i have that x equal b over h multiplied by y minus if i one third of b because if i pass this multiply now or the b multiplies, the h divide, yeah, that's b over h minus one third b. This is x, and this is the value that I'm gonna put there. So whenever I, I now I'm gonna keep solving this problem, and I'm going to continue this equation. I have to find the a, that is gonna define the width of the band, or the width of the differential of area, and that is gonna be equal to one third of b minus that x, which is b over h y minus one third of b this is minus right minus x so that means that this is going to be minus this and then a is going to be equal to this is one third minus times minus is plus it's going to be two thirds so it's going to be equal to two thirds of b minus b over h y that's the a that I was looking over there, looking for over there. And now once I have that, I I can just plug this into the differential of area and say that differential of area is gonna be a, remember, multiplied by dy, that's what we said before. So it's gonna be two thirds of b minus b over hy multiplied by dy. And once I have this, the only thing that I have to do it is plug it into this equation. And then I sub x is going to be equal to the integral of y squared dA, but my dA is this. And the dA is 2 thirds of b minus b over hy dy. And we solve this integral. How do we solve this integral? We separate in two parts. So I sub x is gonna be equal to two thirds of b, this is constant, integral of y squared dy minus b over h is constant, b over h uh, integral of y to the third, because this is y squared times y is y to the third, dy. And we keep solving this. I'm gonna keep solving this. Uh, this integral is going to be i o i x is going to be two thirds of b times y to the third divided by three minus b over h times y to the fourth divided by four. Now we need the limits of integration. The limits of integration, if I'm measuring, remember y in this direction. That's what I'm doing. I have to go from this to there from here to there. Now this is another error that most of the people do. When you do these limits, remember this distance is negative because the zero zero should be here. So this distance is gonna be negative one third of h 
below the axis and this distance from here to here is going to be positive two-thirds of h and those are the two limits that I'm going to incorporate in the, into the equation from negative one-third of h to positive two-thirds of h now let's solve this here once again i sub x is going to be equal 3 times 3 I'm going to multiply there 9 9 b multiplied by y to the third evaluated between these two points so it's going to be basically 2 thirds of h to the third minus minus 1 third of h to the third we are done with this part and for the other part it's going to be minus b over h b over 4 h e over 4 h that multiplies now y to the fourth so two thirds of h to the fourth minus minus one third of h to the fourth and if we keep solving this is this is h cube and this is minus but minus to the third is minus minus times minus is plus so we're going to have two to the third is eight and eight plus one is nine nine so i'm going to have 2b over 9 then I'm going to have here multiply by 9h cube and 3 to the third is 3 times 3 9 times 3 27 minus now I have this other case negative to the fourth is negative so whatever is here is going to be negative 2 to the fourth is 16 16 so I'm going to have b over 4h times and this is going to be 16 but 16 and minus 1 is going to be 15 h to the fourth divided by 3 to the fourth 3 to the fourth is uh, 27 times 3 I'm going to leave it like 27 times 3 because I have this other 27 here I can manipulate better like that now this 4 with this 4 this becomes 3 um this 15 with this 3 becomes 5 here and this 9 and this 9 cancel out so basically what i have is ix equal uh, 2 times b h cubed divided by 27 minus and this is 5 and this is 4 yes uh, I have to check because there are so many numbers here. I told you that I might mess up. So this is 5 B H Q divided by 27 times 4. That's what I got. Hopefully it's good. I don't know. I sub X equal. Now the common factor here is going to be 27 times 4. 27 times 4 divided by this is going to be 4 times 2 is going to be 8 and 8 minus 5 this is going to be the numerator and this is going to be b h cubed so this is going to be 3 3 b h cubed divided by 27 times 4 and this and this cancel out this is 9 9 times 4 is 36 b h cubed divided by 36 and i sub x is b h cubed divided by 36 and remember this is units to the fourth whatever units of length you have to the fourth and this is the formula that you have you have for a uh, center I don't know if I have it here around um, in this mess that is my office but yes I have it I have it here you see I'm not even gonna try to zoom it I'm gonna show it to you here I sub x bhq divided by 36 and this is the centroidal moment of inertia this is a mess you see all the procedures that we have to do all the formulations all the derivations that we have to do only to find that with respect to the sun centroid now, the case is different if we want to find the moment of inertia now with respect to an axis so in the next video I don't want to make this too long but in the next video I'm going to show you just how to find the moment of inertia of the triangle with respect to the base and then how to convert or how an easier way of finding the moment of inertia with respect to the centroid of the same triangle. Keep watching guys, keep watching, I'm doing this for you, have a good day.